pregnancy, and at the last moment, this beautiful young girl said, no, I'm going to give this child a chance. Put this child up for adoption. That was her choice. You see, her choice. I've always said if I could meet that beautiful young girl, I would thank her for setting my life in motion. That beautiful young girl is my birth mother. How about that? Well, three years ago, I did have the opportunity to meet her, and now my adopted mother and my birth mother who are both still alive, have become very good friends. And we do holidays together. I am doubly blessed. I've got two moms that adore me. How many people in this country can say that? Pretty good, huh? Yeah, I was. I was adopted uh, by a Baptist minister in his life, which makes my stance on abortion as a Democratic presidential candidate just a little bit different from anybody else that's out there. And the way I word it is a little bit different. But it's old words. Safe, legal, rare. Safe, legal, rare. Now, what does that mean? That means let's create an environment without changing any laws. Let's don't change Roe versus Wade. Nobody wants to see back alley abortions come into play. But let's create an environment that encourages young girls and young ladies to have children. Let's create an environment where we can raise people up, as my campaign slogan says, to new levels. You know, we have a divided nation right now. We've got a president that talks about making America great again, which insinuates we've been great before. Okay. And we've been great for some people. But I want to ask each and every, every one of you a few questions. Have we been great for the Africans that were sold into slavery? Was it great for them? Was it great for the Native Americans that were pushed onto the Trail of Tears where millions of them were slaughtered? Was it great for African Americans through the Jim Crow era? Is it great for African Americans now when they're afraid to walk out of their, their home in fear of police brutality? So you gotta ask yourself, and everyone should ask our current president this, when was America great for everyone? Tough question. It's gonna take a tough candidate to go up against this man. And I truly believe that I can do that. Now, the, the fellow that was up up here, Tyler, right, right before me, he was talking about Beto, and you know, I, I have a lot of admiration for Beto. I have a lot of admiration for all of my opponents. But now, if you go to my campaign website, riseupwithrobbie.com, you're going to see that I speak in front of crowds that are larger and more diverse than our current president. The eye of the sky does not lie. Now, you've got to ask yourself this question. If I'm speaking in front of crowds that large, in fact, when I announced that I was running for president of the United States in front of over 40,000 people in Atlanta, when I told them I was seeking the Democratic Party's nomination in 2020 to go up against Mr. Trump, that crowd went crazy. And I was less than half a mile from the CNN Center in Atlanta, and they chose not to cover. Now, you've got to ask yourself this. Why do you have a candidate that's speaking to all these people and yet CNN is not covered? A candidate that's speaking to crowds larger than our current president, more diverse than our current president, but CNN is choosing not to cover. Ask that question. Maybe you want to get on the phone and get them to cover. Now, I've been interested in politics since I was a very young child. My father, who was a minister, a minister in this state for over 25 years, actually worked with one of our former presidents, and that was Jimmy Carter. When I was just a little kid, I was eight years old.